Do you feel like you have to urinate all the time? Congratulations. How do you feel? I got to pay. Do you wake up multiple times per night to go to the bathroom? Are you always looking for a bathroom when you're traveling because your bladder just can't seem to hold it together? Pun intended. Now, you may have overactive bladder syndrome. Overactive bladder syndrome can be a real pain in the neck or butt or bladder, but it can point to more serious root causes that need to be addressed. In this first in a series of videos, you'll learn the symptoms and diagnosis of overactive bladder and begin to correct the root cause. Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Kahn, board certified chiropractic neurologist and certified in functional medicine. Let me show you how to master your health. The normal function of the average adult bladder holds between 400 to 700 milliliter of urine. Now it's normal to urinate five to six times a day. And so is getting up once per night to pee. Now the average ur urinary output is between one to one and a half liter per day. Now overactive bladder syndrome is characterized by urinary urgency with or without urinary incontinence, usually with increased daytime frequency in nocturia, which is nighttime urination especially if there's no proven infection or other obvious pathology. So what this means is that overactive bladder is a diagnosis of the symptom of frequent urination and urgency when other conditions have been ruled out, such as urinary tract infection or other disease. Now, this also means that the diagnosis of overactive bladder doesn't tell you what is causing the overactive bladder. Here we go again with the root cause thing again. But the root cause is important because if you don't know what is causing it, you're only masking the symptoms while the real problem can get potentially worse. Now, overactive bladder occurs in both men and women. Incontinence, which means that you can't hold it or lose urinary control and leak, is the most bothersome symptom of overactive bladder. It's reported around 20% of the men and 40% of the women with overactive bladder. But you can have overactive bladder without incontinence. Now, overactive bladder can often be confused with other bladder conditions such as UTI or incontinence. So let's help you understand different types of bladder symptoms so you can differentiate what is going on. Now, urinary frequency is describing how often you go to the bathroom. If you go more than eight times a day, then that may mean that you have this abnormally frequent urination. Now, that frequency doesn't have to be a lot of urine. Sometimes you just go, but you don't you know, pee out a lot of urine. So frequency describing too, off, too many instances of it. This can be involved in overactive bladder, obviously. And then you have urinary urgency. Urgency is describing this abrupt, overwhelming urge to urinate, right? So that's not necessarily related to frequency, although some people can have both. So you have urgency versus frequency. Dysuria is describing this pain, discomfort, burning sensation or tingling sensation when you urinate. Now that's often associated with urinary tract infections, although, this could be an underlying cause of overactive bladder that's not diagnosed properly. Now, polyuria, poly means many. So polyuria means you're producing large amounts of urine. This is frequency, too often. This is too much in the way of the amount. And this is defined as having two and a half liter or more production of urine per day. Now, polyuria can be related to diabetes, kidney disease, liver disease, various different pathologies. It can also be related to diuretic medication use or even just consuming way too much alcohol or coffee or drinking way too much water that can cause you to produce large amount of urine. So sometimes it's not abnormal. It's normal based on the fact that you drink a lot of water. But other times it can be abnormal because you have some kind of condition. Nocturia, nocturnal means nighttime. Nocturia means you're getting up frequently at night to urinate. The definition of that is two or more times per night to urinate is defined as nocturia. So if you just get up once per night, that's normal. But if you're getting up two or more times per night, that can start to cut into your quality of sleep and that can be some type of medical issue. Now, overactive bladder can be involved in that as well because if you're having frequency and that frequency is at night, then obviously then that urinary frequency becomes nocturia because the frequencies happen at night. So this frequency can be during daytime or night. Typically, we're defining it as more than eight times per day. But if you're getting up two or more times per night, then we're calling that nighttime frequent urination. Then you have the urinary incontinence. 
which is describing inability to hold the urine, inability to control bladder function. So you end up with leakage. Sometimes when you have this incontinence issue, that can also be felt as urgency. Although sometimes people can feel urgency but not have incontinence. You can have incontinence without having urgency, but sometimes they can go together. Again, overactive bladder can be involved in each of these as well. Now, that's a lot of terminologies, but hopefully you can see clearly now the difference between these symptoms. Now, the confusion over overactive bladder is that the symptoms can overlap with other conditions. So you can have overactive bladder symptoms due to UTI or interstitial cystitis or prostate hypertrophy or prolapsed uterus or even brain-based mechanism. So the diagnosis of overactive bladder is useless and meaningless if you don't know what is the root cause in your particular case. Now here's a diagram of how the bladder works to help you relieve your bladder. Now the kidney filters the blood and produces urine. And that urine is secreted through the ureter into the bladder. Within the bladder, you have this bladder wall that are made up of this detrusor muscle. This is the main muscle that contract that squeeze the urine out so you can eliminate it. Within this bladder wall, you have these stretch receptors. The stretch receptors detect that the bladder is filling up with fluid, with urine, and the more it's full, the more the receptor gets stretched and fires an action potential, and that fires the neuron, and this is a sensory afferent nerve, which means that it's an incoming nerve, it's a sensory nerve. If you follow the track, it starts, it innervates here at the sacral region, goes all the way up to the spinal cord into your cerebral cortex. In the brain, you have a micturition center, micturition, which means urination, so process that sensation. Now, within the bladder, you also have these internal sphincter and the external sphincter. This will be your, your urethra, where the urine is going to flow out. Now, in male, you have the prostate here. In female, obviously, you don't. What happens is, as the bladder is filling up with urine, the internal sphincter muscle are usually contracted. When it's contracted, it's closed so the urine doesn't flow out. When you want to go to the bathroom and, and urinate, then the, the internal sphincter muscle must relax while the detrusor muscle squeeze. So this muscle squeeze, this muscle relaxes and opens that up. There's also the external sphincter which also opens up, then the urine flows out. Now, this is all innervated by different nerves. So you can see here that we have the, the green one. The green comes from the brain stem, specifically from the mesencephalon or the midbrain. That's where the sympathetic nervous system originates. The sympathetic then is going to come out through the sympathetic ganglion. This is called the hypoglossal nerve. And it's going to innervate both the detrusor as well as the internal sphincter. You can see that the negative sign means that it's going to inhibit the detrusor muscle, which is going to make the detrusor muscle not contract, and it's going to activate, excite the internal sphincter muscle so that they do contract. So when you have the sympathetic influence on the bladder, it's going to cause you to hold the urine. Okay? Now, the purple line is indicating the parasympathetic fibers, and this starts in the pontine micturition center, so in the brainstem ponting area, the pons, you have the neurons that just starts there. It's going to go down the spinal cord into the sacral region. It's going to come out through the pelvic nerve. And this pelvic nerve is going to have branches that go to the detrusor, the internal sphincter, and the external sphincter. And what happens is when the parasympathetic fibers are firing, it's going to make you want to urinate. And the way it does that is by contracting the detrusor muscle, relaxing the internal sphincter, as well as relaxing the external sphincter. So everything opens up while the detrusor squeezes and the urine come out. That's what happens when you go urinate. However, there's another key here. What happens when you have to hold it? What if the bathroom's still 10 minutes away down the road and you don't want to urinate on yourself? Well, you have the ability to voluntarily hold that. And that's these red fibers. So you can see that comes from the cerebral cortex and goes down the spinal cord in the front part of the cortex, while the sensory nerves goes in the back of the, of the spinal cord. In the back of the brain, the motor, or the muscle contraction part of the brain, is in the front part. 
is going to exit the sacral area, becomes the pudendal nerve, which is a somatic motor nerve, which means that you have voluntary control versus a parasympathetic and a sympathetic, you don't have voluntary control. So the somatic motor means you have that voluntary control through go good cortical function, brain function, and that's going to innervate the external sphincter here. You can see the plus sign, which means that you can contract the sphincter. So even if the parasympathetic is firing, your bladder is full of fluid. You have a lot of fluid here, and you want to void. The parasympathetic is going to say, wow, you know, we're noticing the stretch is really full, and involuntarily, your body wants to push that urine out. But you can hold it by contracting the external sphincter and thereby stop the urine from coming out. So that's how you can hold it, right? Now, all of this requires good nervous system function. So we have the brain itself, and we have the autonomic nervous system that has to be functioning properly, and we have the stretch receptor that play a big role in detecting how much stretch. Now, the main thing that you want to understand is that this bladder control is intricately controlled by the nervous system. So any nervous system dysfunction centrally can impact how your bladders are going to be able to function. And also locally, anything that can alter stretch receptor activity, whether it be due to inflammation of the bladder wall or infection of the bladder wall, can cause these re stretch receptors to fire more prematurely, therefore making you feel like you need to go even though there's not a lot of fluid. And that can lead to the symptom of overactive bladder. Now, the diagnosis of overactive bladder is made on the basis of symptoms alone. Sometimes your doctor may perform urodynamic tests to assess the trusor function and other bladder-related functions, but this is not often done. And overactive bladder is commonly an assumed diagnosis based on symptoms, and the root cause is often ignored. And once you get the diagnosis of overactive bladder, one of several medications will be prescribed to treat the symptoms. You'll start with anticholinergics, which block autonomic nervous system fu function, but this blocks autonomic nervous system function not just in the bladder, but everywhere else too. So side effects can include dry mouth, constipation, blurred vision, drowsiness, confusion, and cardiac effects. In fact, a 2011 systematic review of 149 papers found that the discontinuation rate of this type of treatment is 43 to 83% in the first 30 days because the side effects are so rough. Now, if that doesn't work, then it's antispasmodics. If that doesn't work, then it's beta-3 agonists. If that doesn't work, it's Botox injection of the bladder. Ouch. Each carry with it a long list of side effects. Now remember, these are all treating the symptoms with no regard to what caused the overactive bladder in the first place. So what is the root cause? Or more accurately, what are the root causes? Now I have found, after working with over 6,000 clients with chronic brain immune gut dysfunction, that there are multiple root causes each impacting one another that can lead to a vicious cycle. And these root causes not only lead to your unpleasant symptoms of overactive bladder, they also cause symptoms and degeneration in other parts of the body as well. Now, these root causes include the gut microbiome, the urobiome, which is a bacteria composition in your bladder, the bladder-brain axis, hypoxia, which is a lack of oxygen state, inflammation, and chronic infection, possibly involving biofilms. So overactive bladder is no longer just a bladder problem. It is a signal that something bigger is driving multiple systems to dysfunction. Now you can't fix this with mere medications. This requires a holistic approach of getting the right functional medicine lab test done to identify the root cause and a laser targeted nutrition, supplement and lifestyle strategies to correct the underlying root cause and heal the body. The result is that the overactive bladder improves as a side effect of gaining a healthy and functioning body. Now in the next video, you'll learn about each of these root causes and how they're connected to overactive bladder and your overall health. Hope this helps you understand how your bladder works and the different symptoms of overactive bladder. Please let me know in the comments if you struggle with any of these symptoms and if your doctor has given you a satisfactory answer. Now, if you found value in this video, please give this video a thumbs up and consider sharing it with those who need to hear this message. Please subscribe to get my channel to get more tips to master your health. I really appreciate your support. 
God bless you and see you in the next video.